everyone, what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and B-Man G Drive. We are doing something a bit different today, um, as you could tell, uh, we are doing a sport wagon or super wagon or you know a sport brick or a, an estate, whatever you want to call it. We are doing a vehicle with four doors and it's also a hatchback and it's also pretty much a sedan. So uh, we're doing a wagon, uh, a very high performance one at that. As you can tell at the top here, we are doing 2015, so we're not doing a brand new one, we're not doing something crazy old, so in the year 2015, so you had things like the E63 AMG Sport Wagon, uh, you the Cadillac CTSV, I think the CTSV wagon just ended in the previous gen, a couple years earlier, you also have uh, the C63, uh, and then there's all other cars, I think there's a Jaguar XF Sport Brake, maybe a bunch of super wagons, and we're making one today. Now, as you might be able to tell here, uh, I've already chosen a few things, so panel material is partial aluminum, like most cars of the modern era, most of them have some aluminum, and we are going with that on our car. Uh, monocoque chassis, like every pretty much modern car, there's not really much cars that aren't monocoque. Uh, light AHS steel, and then front mounted longitudinal engine, so of course front engine, rear wheel drive, like any true sports sedan, or wagon in this case. Um, suspension, of course, this is going to be pretty expensive. I'm shooting for around the $75,000, $80,000 mark-ish. So it's of course V8 powered at rear wheel drive. Uh, it's going to be fast. It's going to be a six-speed manual as well. So, um, you know, of course it's going to be a big V8. Uh, I'm thinking an American wagon in this in this case. So it's going to be like, you know, Cadillac CTSV competitor. So a, you know, a luxury performance, really high performance wagon. Uh, double wishbone in the front and then multi-link in the back, so pretty expensive stuff for, you know, a premium luxury sport vehicle wagon thing. We're making something pretty fast. It's gonna be fun to drive for sure. So for engine block, uh, and I'm gonna sort of just breeze through this while we're going. I'm not gonna explain everything in crazy detail, but knowing myself, I probably will anyways. Uh, so a 60 degree V8, like a big true American V8. Eight cylinders, of course, aluminum block. Uh, I think we're going to do push run. This is going to be, you know, modern, but not modern. So it's going to have a V8 aluminum block, but it's push run because, you know, what good American V8 is not push run these days? Just kidding. Most aren't. But, uh, some are. So we're going to do nice and big. I'm thinking 6.5 liter, no, 7 liters, 6.5 liters. It's going to be an NA V8. No turbos here. Uh, if there's supercharger choice, I would take that, but there isn't. Let's do 6.5 exactly. Start with just all cast iron for now. It's not going to be very high revving. I'm hoping for tons of torque. I'm hoping for around the uh, 500, 600 pound feet of torque range and the 500, 600 horsepower range. It's going to be crazy fast. It's going to be crazy fast. Um, top end, we'll keep all this stock for now. We'll keep that all stock. Uh, injection. Now, most cars in 2015 weren't really. Uh, most American cars are. I don't know. Some are direct. Some are direct. Some are not. We're going to do. Uh, good old multi-point fuel injection, first cylinder performance. This is not a race car. It's not going to be, you know, 800 horsepower. It's going to be low revving. Mean. It's going to be mean. Uh, and then premium fuel, of course, like any high-performance vehicle. We're going to do tubular exhaust from the start. Dual, high flow exhaust. And then I think we're not going to have a second muffler. And I might actually change the uh, intake just so it sounds better. So um, uh, what we can see here is the engine makes not much horsepower, not much torque. We're gonna hear what it sounds like first, because I just wanted to make it sound good. Then we'll play along with all the of things and stuff. So let's just take a listen, I guess. Sounds pretty good, but what if we just change the standard intake? To make a bit of a difference in the exhaust. Uh, didn't change it all that much, and I meant engine, not exhaust, of course. Uh, let's do no first and second muffler. Standard. Honestly, it's still kind of just crazy aggressive. Let's just try standard exhaust and all straight through mufflers. Much more of sedated, but it's still loud, you know? It's just so loud. Uh, I don't like the uh, the performance intake sound. Let's just do standard intake. Uh, bypass valves and long tubular, then no secondary muffler. Try that. You know what? The V8s, it sounds good. 
I just don't think the V8 sound the best in this game. It sounds fine. There's not enough differentiation. Let's bring it to just 6,000 RPM at the start here. Let's increase the cam profile and turn on VVT. Compression can go up to 10.5 to start. And then fuel mixtures. A bigger exhaust probably. Yep. 0.5 right here. Gets up to the max. I don't care if this thing gets terrible gas mileage. I'm hoping for like 15. This is a you know high performance vehicle, obviously. Uh, and we can go forged. Six thousand RPM was to go. Pretty high cam profile. It's to be hard to get 600 horsepower. Yeah. I mean, how do we have 500 horsepower and 600 torque? I mean, we, I think we'll have to go direct injection here. So just ram it a little bit, everything and just bring it to 10. Uh, let's just go. Clear on the stuff here. So what I'm going to do, spend a few minutes tinkering with the engine, guys, and I'll be back in just a second. I'll go over with you guys. We're back here at the engine. So as you can tell, uh, 553 horsepower. Oh, no. 553 horsepower, which is pretty good. Definitely. It's in the range. And then three, 535 torque. I actually want to get that to 5. An even number. So 560 horse, because I, I thought it was 555. Five, it's got to be even numbers, right? So 560 horse, 535 torque. It's a bit on the low side. I mean, I said 500 to 600, I guess. So I wanted more torque than horse, but um, what I did to the engine, up the fuel mixture, just to, actually, I think I lowered it actually just to get the, uh, the compression by from 10.5 to 12 to 1, which is incredibly high compression um, for lots of engines, especially for a big 6.5 liter V8. And I also had to change it from overhead or push rods, sorry, to dual overhead cam. And I did five valve. Uh, I could do four valve and have a variable valve lift and stuff, but it's just more fun having five valves. It's just unique, you know, there's always something unique about the engine. So, um, as you can see here, I chose this body style. This is what we're doing for the, uh, the wagon. I mean, it's considered a wagon too. This is a wagon, just a long hatchback. I don't know. I just did this. Is that a wagon? I guess, I guess it's not. Uh, so yeah, we're doing this wagon body here. Um, of course, I'll design and stuff, you know, time lapse after we go through all this stuff here. So I chose the, there's a couple of these 2009 era sedans and stuff and small vehicles. This is the, the compact one. So this is going to compete in something like a, you know, in between probably size wise of a Cadillac ATSV and a CTSV. It's, it's American, big American V8. And it also being around the size of a C class to an E class. You know, it's it's in the middle. It's not gonna be too big, not gonna be too small. It's gonna be sporty. So let's go through here. Things like drivetrain and stuff. So rear wheel drive, manual, six speed, maybe a seven speed, because good old American. American Z manual, so 250 kilometers just to start. Top speed will probably be more. Keep all that stock. Let's have a um, limited slip diff and basic radial sports, of course. And uh, I'm gonna increase the width. It's not white. 75 is front, 275 is rear. That's a good start. So, this is a chunky sedan. So, let's see. 19 inch, big, meaty. There you go. So, chunky tires, 19 inches. Is, yeah, pretty standard. Alloy wheels just to start. I might go magnesium if I'm feeling, you know, if I have some budget left over. Rented discs, four piston, biggest size for now, and uh, two piston, biggest size just to start off. We'll play around that later. Uh, let's just do fully clad and cooling flaps. So the reason for this, of course, is uh, although it's a big V8 and it's a performance vehicle, I want to have a realistic-ish fuel economy. I don't want to have seven miles per gallon because that's that's, that's that's not happen with any car. Uh, seats five still obviously sports, and we're gonna have just standard infotainment. Um, Variable hydraulic because electric's too it's too expensive. It's like, right? Go American via classic. Electric. Fancy. Long control, of course, and then best safety, like always. Um standards for progressive springs, semi-active and active. So let's have some advanced cheaper suspensions. I think more expensive advanced suspension. Let's just do tune in for sport. Six inch ground clearance. A little higher, maybe 7.7. .7. So, 
before we go and do some fine tuning for the car and the time lapse I'm gonna have, uh, we'll, we'll just look at some big stats here. So right now the top speed is 250. Actually, let's play with that. Yep, three, just over three is 300. Okay, sweet. So 300 kilometers an hour. Uh, you know, and again, I use Imperial and metric. So for all those people who don't like that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I use it, metric for some things, imperial for others, like, you know, in Canada we use kilometers an hour, obviously, uh, millimeters, and then we use also, I use inches for the brake size, <laughs> which makes no sense, and uh, fuel economy, 14 and a half, which is bad, of course, not terrible, I think it's probably in a line with, um, what a CTSV would be with a 6.2 supercharged, uh, 4,100 pounds, which is on the light side, actually, weight distribution is pretty good, 52 and a half, to a 47 and a half it's pretty good roll angle is quite high 5.1 degrees ever I guess not terrible um, let's play with the you go it was to a seven speed and just have shorter gear in there a lot of gears to through maybe so I'll probably tune around with a bit this a bit more uh, I'm yeah I think seven speeds the way to go you know sequential well, is not gonna happen obviously Advanced automatic I could do, or maybe dual clutch. I don't think there's a single American performance car with a dual clutch. Uh, except for the Mustang GT500 and the Ford GT. Fine. Um, yeah, so I, th I think it's... The stats are okay. 4.3 seconds, 0 to 60. A little bit on the slow side for 500 and whatever horsepower. Uh, we'll play around with that. I might get bigger tires yet and make it wider. We'll see, though. Um, so yeah, I'm going to spend the next half an hour probably designing the car bring that into a few minute time lapse to you guys and then we'll go over all the design and you know all the other stuff I changed little bits here and there and then it'll be a few minutes and then we'll go on to driving this crazy machine in BMG Drive. See you guys in a sec. So we have it guys, the brand new, not really brand new I guess, but it's the, uh, you know, the all new for 2015 Striker TCR, uh, the Maven Striker TCR of course, made by Maven Motors, the greatest motor company in the history of America, even though Canadian is the best Canadian motor company, sure. Uh, so this is the 2015 Striker TCR, a front engine, a rear wheel drive, wagon behemoth from a good old Canada. Uh, powered by a 6.5 liter V8 engine with four, 560 horsepower and five. So let's look over the design a bit more, then we'll look at the final stats, and then we'll go ahead and drive this car around the track. Um, so front end, it, you know, it, it does look a little bit Ford-like with the headlights and like the Ford-ish grille. Um, you know, I wasn't going for it 
just sort of happened. I wanted to use these taillights for the headlights, and then everything is sort of just, you know, rolled into place. Um, you know, I think it looks like a really, really angry, almost a Mustang, and a, not a, you know, it's a Mustang and a Ford, uh, uh, Fusion, that's what it is. Yeah, Ford Fusion and Ford Mustang, maybe. And it's hyper aggressive. It's just on steroids. I love it. Uh, it, it I think it looks pretty, pretty good. It got some lots of carbon fiber accents. This, this carbon fiber bar I made. I could have made this probably a lot easier, but I chose to make it the hard way because I'm an idiot. Fine. Uh, you know, big sort of vents. Tons of, you know, open air and vents here. So much air going to the engine. It's crazy. Throw another side here. So, uh, side's a bit more tame, of course. The wheels, you know, I don't think I'm happy with them, actually. Let's change yeah, these ones are the ones I want. These ones are slightly better, so. Uh, nothing says, I'm, you know, I'm from America, like, big five-spoke wheels. Then massive disc brakes, of course, too. Carbon fiber door handles, lots of carbon fiber. Uh, the wheels are carbon fiber as well. Zoom in nice and close there, like a nice chromy carbon fiber. Or not chromy, but a shiny carbon fiber, I guess. Same with the actual trim of the car itself. The roof is also made out of carbon fiber, so they basically took their run-of-the-mill you know, striker, you know, sporty luxury wagon thing that they had lying around and they threw a massive V8 in it uh, and then they made it a before. So, it shows. To the back here, um, you know, pretty, pretty satisfied with both the front and the rear. Um, of course, neither are perfect, but I like, I like the rear a lot. I love having, like, just side mount license plate. It's like, it's not supposed to be there, but you kind of have to have it there. Uh, so we got the big striker TCR badges, you know, there and there. Nice big tail lights, the same as the headlights, almost the same size as well. Goes into this, you know, similar style slot of the grill, same with the rear grill. So I like I like keeping design elements from things. We can bring it to the back. Be you know matched over this intake to the back here. I don't know if I like it 100 percent but we're gonna stick with it anyways. And then big old exhaust tips here. So quad exhaust, I mean it's quad tips. Uh, handle there, the Maven logo right there again, and a nice big wang side. Overall, pretty happy with the tires are massive. Definitely uh, more of a drag car than a track car, but you know, I, I think you'll be happily surprised with how it performs. So let's go to the final stats page. I managed to get the car. They do 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. Top speed of 300 kilometers an hour in the nose. Um, it could probably do a little more, but you know, I could probably do 200 miles an hour, which is what, 330 kilometers? Uh, but this is okay. Weight distribution, it's almost perfect. It is 51 of a rounding to 49. A so very good weight distribution. It's gonna, you know, have good balance on the track. It's gonna need it because it's got a ton of power right in through drive. Um, yeah, roll angle is still not great. It's kind of a heavy vehicle at 4,000 pounds. Um, you know, towing capacity is quite good actually. Let's see the um, other stats here. Oh, no, not what I was looking for. I want to see. So the, yeah, the price is 63 and a half thousand. Um, kind of on the low side actually. This is a very affordable vehicle. If this was out in real life, I'd pick one up for sure. Uh, 14 miles to the gallon, so that's one of the reasons why no one bought this thing. It's terrible on gas. Um, it does have a lot of cargo volume, almost a thousand liters of cargo volume. I don't know if that compares to anything, but that sounds like a big number, so we'll take it. Uh, okay, stats as well, so it's considered a family sport premium and a muscle premium. It's literally the demographic we want to fit into. Uh, the, the, uh, the engineering time is only, what is that? 12 years, not bad at all. It's quite high actually, but it's uh, anyways, guys, let's throw this car into Beeman G Drive and see if it handles as good as it looks. We are finally here in Beeman G Drive with the Striker TCR Super Sport Performance Wagon. Uh, it looks it looks pretty good in uh, Beeman G Drive. There's a little bit of glitches and stuff, like that swirly thing and that. But um, you know, the converter is not perfect, obviously. And actually, one thing I did notice actually, I forgot. You know, I forgot the bigger turn signals. Those turn signals are tiny. Definitely needs bigger turn singles. That's okay, though. Uh, and, you know, it's not perfect. Uh, this wing might fall off. It might stay on. You know, it's hard to get wings when they're, like, it's on the window, so it's, it's kind of hard to stay on. Sometimes it falls off. That's okay. Uh, yeah, it does look pretty good to automation, so we're going to do two things in Beam and G Drive. Uh, one is a drag race, of course. You can see with the drag strip. And the other one's going to be the test track. So we're going to do a couple drag races just to see around what it can do in the quarter mile. Uh, I hope for, I'd say, 11 to 12 seconds is what we're shooting for, so we'll see... We can uh, beat that. We're going to restart this. We're going to do realistic shifting, takeoff track, schedule. We don't need that. Not at all. Not bad.
Oh, <laughs> there goes the wing. Oh my gosh. Well, that was 11.75 seconds. Oh my gosh, that wing. We're in trouble over time. Well, that did not happen in my test ones. It, it fell off sooner. Come on. Just keep going straight. 11.6. There it goes again. And it does not like high speed at all. We're losing all of our downforce there. That's okay. 11.5-ish seconds. 11 and 3 quarters seconds, we'll just say. Which is pretty good. Now I will uh, jump to the test track. We'll take it for a loop around the track and see how it handles. See you guys there in just a sec. I'm going to take it nice and slow, though. Not, it's not a race. But, uh, you know, comfortably we'll race pretty comfortably. We're going to break. There it goes. On the first corner, it's already gone. Oh, wow, the back end does not like to stay straight at all. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a sideways kind of vehicle. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the suspension's super stiff. It's way too stiff, but that's okay. It likes to slide a lot. And brake. Uh, All-wheel drive would have been much, much more easily to control, but then, where's the fun of that? Oh, uh, nice. Come on. There we go. Full throttle through the turn. Oh. I'm going to try that one more time. And full stop here. Down to the second. Full throttle here. Go into this nice big turn. Down a second. And up to fourth quickly. Full speed through the straightaway here. 53 seconds in the first checkpoint, which is pretty bad. You can probably get a car that's a lot slower, a lot faster. A lot less work for a lot faster, but you know. Link shot here. Oh, we're sliding. That's okay. Break a bit early because we don't know what's happening here. Okay, down to fourth, third, and out of the turn, just accelerate. Oh, yeah, it handles with the aids on. It's pretty, pretty, you know, tame. I guess it still does like to slide a lot. We're breaking way too late here. We're gonna slide. Oh, I need to get the wheel set up here for sure. This is nuts. Well, I think all we can do is just have a nice little scenic drive. Nice little slow drive. Wing falls off every time. Oh, we're turning way too late. That's okay. We're going to make it. It's fine. That's fine. This is fine. Here we go. That was great, though. Oh. We're good. There we go. Nice indoor view of the vehicle, very, very empty, but that's okay. It's just a, just a prototype, obviously. Sounds great, though. Wow. Especially from far away. Oh, we're just hitting things like that. Pulling to the left so hard now. We crashed. It 
This vehicle is basically the Mustangs, you know, crashing into crashing into things of sport wagons. Then again, I think you crash into anything when you launch your car at like you know six and a half thousand RPM. Just driving, just drive the car at first gear. First gear the whole time. There we go. We're not gonna crash at all. Don't do slow. <laughs> That's so loud. Nice and slow. The engine's pretty tough, and it's not even stressed out at all. Alright, so what we're going to do now, guys, is just for the last minute or so, is just enjoy some nice driving, some nice scenic driving, hopefully, while I'm just talking about the car. Um, let's just start off the driving here. Realistic behavior. Turn off track. We're just going to go for nice, slow, scenic drive. With the cinematic camera, of course, which I can't really see that well, but you know. It's there. Oh, oh stay on the road here. There we go. Um, so yeah, guys, let me know. You know, what kind of vehicles you want me to make? This is one of you guys recommended I make, uh, you know, a sport wagon. I hope it's up to your standards. It's definitely, you know, something I enjoyed making. It was definitely, you know, really fun to make. Who doesn't love a good sport wagon, of course? Uh, yeah, so leave a comment down below whatever vehicles you guys want me to do possibly next. Uh, I have another vi another video actually being done by my brother. Who um, is going to be posting on this channel as well. Oh, we're in the ditch here. That's fine. We'll be posting on the channel as well. We sound the exact same. He's, he's much newer to YouTube than I am. I've been doing YouTube, like other YouTube things for a few years, actually. So, uh, oh, it crashed. Don't uh, don't judge him too harshly. Um, so this is going to be up here today, or whatever this is posted. And uh, the other one will be up in a couple days from now. Make sure to, uh, you know, check it out when it comes up, guys. Appreciate all the feedback and stuff. And yeah, leave a comment down below of what you want to see. More of, I guess. So, um, you know... Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.